And hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Kyle the Pug Sports Review, episode number seven. I am, of course, Kyle the Pug, a.k.a. Kyle Lohan. And today we're going to have some topics for you on Wednesday's show. So with me, of course, is the Amish guy himself. Not really Amish, but we all like calling him Amish because he loves giving up at 4.30, 4 o'clock in the morning-ish. It's Cowboy Nick. How y'all doing, folks? And yes, I, and yes, I am not Amish. But I, but and yes, I am not Amish, really. You're already messing up, pal. Ooh. Well, all you gotta do is just present it, and then everybody's gonna think you're in the Amish lifestyle. Well, anyways, a part of uh, Cowboy Nick being an Amish boy, we got to get, of course, to our topics of the day for this episode. So, as of right now, we're going to get into, of course, we're going to talk about the uh, next, uh, not the next three Super Bowls, but the 2019, 2020, and 2021 Super Bowls going into um, uh, these uh, next three cities here. And we got the update on the Stanley Cup playoffs and the... Um, Western Conference and Eastern Conference Finals. But right now, we are going to talk about game number four of uh, last night's game between the Golden State Warriors and the Oklahoma City Thunder. Now, this situation, of course, the Oklahoma City Thunder, they are up 3-1 to one against the Golden State, who supposedly were favored to go to the finals in this uh, matchup, but hold on a second. The Thunder are one game away, and that's right, one game away from reaching the NBA Finals and possibly, you know, pulling off one of the biggest upsets, and maybe not biggest upsets, or they might make themselves known as one of the teams that upset a number one seed, though, in the NBA Western Conference Finals history. So, Basically, what we're looking at here is that the uh, Golden State Warriors have been compared all season to the Chicago Bulls dynasty in the 1990s are on the brink of elimination. So, remember that. They've been compared to the Chicago Bulls dynasty in the 90s. So, we better be on the lookout for that one, eh? But, anyways, Russell Westbrook had a triple-double with 36 points, 11 boards, and 11 assists. And the Oklahoma City Thunder beat the Golden State Warriors. 118 to 94 on Tuesday night, and to take a three to one lead in the Western Conference Finals. Golden State, which won a league record in 73 games in the regular season, lost consecutive games for the first time this season. The Warriors must win Game Five on Thursday in Oakland to keep their season alive. So basically, what we're looking at here is, like I, like I said, Warriors are down three to one, and and here's a little statistic here for you: the teams. The only teams that likely can come back from being down 3-1, like a little statistic here I'm going to talk about, is that only 3% of these teams who were down 3-1 to ever come back to win the series. And that's kind of saying something there. So do the Golden State Warriors have any chance of coming back in winning Game 5 or maybe the next three games in general? All right, well, speaking speaking of Steph Curry, he was limited, you know, yeah, he was limited to 19 points. He was 6 for 20 shooting, and Curry's shooting performance was so uncharacteristic that the reporters had to ask Steve Kerr if he was actually hurt. And, and this is what Steve Kerr said about this, and I quote, and he's not really injured at all. He's coming back from the knee, but he's not injured. He just had a lousy night. It happens to, it happens even to the best players in the world, unquote. So what do you think about those quotes from Steve Kerr? Uh, I mean I mean I mean I do agree with Steve Kerr on like one a couple of points that every bad player, you know, you know, has had bad nights. I mean yeah. take a I mean, let's, let's go a couple years back with you know, Kobe Bryant, for example. Yeah, he's had bad games, but he's come in the clutch when he uh, needs to for the, for the Lakers. So 
that, I mean, Steve Kerr, I'm mean, Steve Kerr. Steph Curry can actually do the same thing as well. But oh, however, the Oklahoma City Thunder just they limited him to 19 points, and he just couldn't get anything. Good. I mean, it's just one of those nights, though. So don't really t don't take it like so seriously. Though. I mean, they can they can come back though. I'm not saying they can't. The Warriors can actually come back, but a three percent chance. I mean, it's it's not impossible. It's just really really hard. All right, well, here's another statistic I'm going to throw at you. So the Warriors have lost consecutive playoff games by at least 20 points for the first time since games two and three of the 1972 Western Conference semifinals against the Milwaukee Bucks. Here, that, what do you think of that stat? I think it's pretty, I think it's pretty crazy. But the other fact is, too, is the fact that Oklahoma has also been um, uh, ever since the draft they've been using Oklahoma City to the Warriors and the Well, not just that though, but Golden State's got a they got a hell of a fight coming in for the next three games, even if they, you know, try to keep their season alive at that point. So anyways, going back to uh, Oklahoma City Thunder, Kevin Durant added twenty six points to eleven boards, and Sergei Ibaka added seventeen points and seven rebounds as well. So let's which gets to uh tonight's game, of course, between the um Cavaliers and the Raptors. That series is tied at two to two. So, in the next three games between the, these two teams, what do you see out of uh, what do you see out of here? I'm seeing a lot of ball control from both teams. I'm seeing a lot of performance out of both teams. But the one thing I'm looking forward to do to see is a lot of two point, a lot of those two pointers that LeBron James is known for. Well, especially if he's like a foot away from the basket, all he's got to do is drive to the hoop. One of his strong points of his game. Well, okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna ask you something here. So, what would you, what would the NBA think if there was a Thunder Raptors finals? The NBA would not want that. I don't think the NBA would. The NBA would not want that. They want to see a rematch between the two number one seeds. Oh yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. Cleveland's not in any better position, but Golden State's probably on the worst end of the stick. Well, the Raptors have, like I said, they've been really underrated teams. So they actually have been able to. They're the only team to actually contend with Cleveland in the playoffs, other than, apart from the uh, Eastern Conference semifinals and the um, in the first round of the entire playoffs. I mean, two to two, it's a series tied up. I mean, anything goes from here. I mean, all the Raptors got to do is contain LeBron James and everybody else on the uh, Cavaliers, including Kevin Love and Kyrie Irving. If they do that and they play phenomenal defense, then they actually do have a shot at winning the game. That's for sure. Yeah, but tonight they're going to be in the foot of the ball. Karina and that, Alina, 
Well, like I said, I mean, that doesn't really mean anything, but like I said, if you... Well, like I said, like I said, home home court as of right now doesn't really well. I just asked the Oklahoma City Thunder. But anyways, um, moving on here, different topics. We going to the NFL really quick, and now we're gonna announce the next uh, Super Bowl locations for the year 2019, 2020, and 2021. So, owners award the 2019 Super Bowl to Atlanta, 2020 to South. Florida, so the Super Bowl will be like somewhere in the South Florida region. And then wait for this one. 2021 will be set in the new Ram Stadium in Los Angeles. So what do you think about that? Yeah, and it's, it's the new Miami Stadium Garden, Miami Stadium and Miami Gardens in Florida. That's going to be a 2020. But we're going to re- let's uh, let's talk about this really quick. So, LA will basically will reintroduce itself to the NFL this season following the relocation of the Rams who joined Atlanta and South Florida being awarded the future Super Bowls during Tuesday's NFL Spring Meeting. So, LA will host Super Bowl 55 in 2021. And, of course, the final three bids awarded during the meeting via the course with Atlanta earning the bid for Super Bowl 53 in 2019. And, and of course, South Florida will receive the bid for Super Bowl 54 in 2020. So, the last time the Super Bowl was held in Los Angeles area was July, or not July, January 31st, 1993, when the Dallas Cowboys defeated the Buffalo Bills 52-17 in Super Bowl 27 at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. The city last hosted an NFL team in 1994, and of course, with the Raiders' this last season before returning to uh, Oakland. So, and then of course, with the recap of the next five Super Bowls, along with the of course before the uh, 2019 Super Bowl, 2017, this is going to take place in the NRG Stadium in Houston, and then you'll have the 2018 Super Bowl in the U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So, what are your thoughts on that, Cowboy? I'm just like, wow. But I am, I am also saying this, that I am glad that we blew all that. God, you are just obsessed with that, aren't you? Well, I'm just happy to say this. Man, like, think about how long it's been since people have seen the blue and gold. You know, and people, like, come on, I have, I have waking up in the morning and looked up there and seen, like, just waking up and seeing how many people have I seen. I've seen over a thousand people who have put comments. Oh, I just got my new blue and gold. I just got my new blue and gold jersey. I just got my new blue and gold hat. And all this stuff. It's just like, wow. People are, they just can't wait. They just can't wait. Or, they just can't wait. They can't wait wait for, we're waiting. (laughs) They just can't wait for the Rams to get that old. All right. Well, speaking of Atlanta, Atlanta last hosted the uh, hosted the Super Bowl game on January 30th, 2000, when Kurt Warner led, led the at the time the St. Louis Rams to a 23-16 win over the Tennessee Titans in Super Bowl 34 at the Georgia Dome. And South Florida last hosted the uh, event on February 7th, 2010, with the New Orleans Saints defeating the, the uh, Indianapolis Colts 31 to 17 in Super Bowl. 44 and played at Sun Life Stadium in Miami Garden. So, <clears throat> sorry, I had some allergies there. No, it really, no, no. I mean, that's that's basically the last time it has been for this team. So, and basically, uh, what um, what Ross said about this, and of course, we don't know who that is. Of course, I'm a, the Stephen Ross, who is uh, just he's he's one of the committees on that program. And I quote, and this is what he said. It's going to be great for Miami, it's going to be great for the Miami Dolphins, and we're going to feel better once we're playing in the game, unquote. 
So the next two Super Bowls will take place, like I said, in Houston and Minneapolis, respectively. So, Cowboy, if you're still available, hopefully you're probably in the other room. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, so what are your what are your overall thoughts on this, you know, article and, of course, the uh, history with this whole situation? It's a great history. It's going to be interesting to see. But when it comes to a team like Miami, there is no game better. Um, well, you never know. You never know with Miami. They will. Uh, I don't see it. I, 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 I'm sorry. Ever from all these other years that you've seen Miami, um, I'm sorry to say this. Miami, you need a lot more work. Um, well, well, like I said, they have a they have a really decent quarterback in Ryan Tannehill, and they actually picked up some young guys on defense, too. So don't count them out. They're really underrated. Yes, but the other fact is, too, that when you look at it, that's what I'm saying. They picked up some young guys on defense who are actually really good. Yeah, but it could, but you never know. I'm just not saying it's not impossible and it could happen. I'm not supporting them, but I'm saying it could happen. I'm just saying that I just don't see a. For me this year, I see them going, uh, having a pretty good season, but I just don't see them in the playoffs or anything like that. I, I'm just saying I don't see that happening. Well, yeah, speaking of teams, like, you know, in the uh, AFC East, so what are the chance? well, what are, what are the, um, what are the page, well, I'm not saying the Patriots are going to have a down year, but what is, uh, what is uh, Tom Brady's chances of getting to, a, hopefully, another AFC title game this year? You know, uh, you know, honestly, I'm going to say this. Age um, is just a number. That's all yeah, I have to say. I don't, I don't know if we're going to see a performance well, like I said, I mean, he, he tends to grow older with age. Every time he gets older, he does better. I And in, especially, you know, around that time, even with uh, Brett Favre, he, he's, I think he, I think he's pulling a little something better than Brett Favre did when he's like trying to stay in the league, like keeping his stats up and all that. I mean, he's, but he's got like, I would say he's got like more rings and not more rings, but he's tied up there with Joe Montana and um, anybody else. He's like one of the greatest court Super Bowl quarterbacks to ever play the game. He's up there with uh, Joe Montana for sure. All right, all right, all right. He's, he's around. That Montana. That's why I said he's up there. <laughs> God, I mean, this is this is the this is coming from the guy who's been wishing injury on him for so many years, and he had that one year where he gets hurt, and then all of a sudden you just start having a party, and you're just like, oh yeah, and you never you never wish for an injury on somebody. Come on now, let's be real here. Yeah, remember remember when the uh, when he got injured with this, uh, for that one year. I forgot what, he, I know it was somewhere in the lower body, but it was, um, you remember what that year when he got hurt, right? That's when the, um, that's where the new rule came into play. It said there was, like, no cheap shots below the waist. Yeah. And guess where that came from when yeah. Tom Brady yeah. got hurt? Yeah. But, you know, you know, I, this year, I mean, Well, like I mean, like I said, I mean he's he's had a great career. I mean, despite you know his off season, off season, not off season, but off the field it would be the more correct term. The uh, situations that he's had, of course, the uh, Deflate Gate and of course Spy Gate and all that other jazz, blah blah blah. But you can't really take anything away from the guy for what he's accomplished, you know, in the postseason. No, but the fact. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, and then you probably get ejected for like the uh, next for the rest of the season for putting in on a cheap shot. Yeah, and then everybody's going to call you a heartless bastard, and you're not going to be too thrilled about what the fans think of you, and then you're going to go on a rampage, and then you're just going to injure somebody else. But anyway... Well, anyways, moving on here, we are going to get to the NHL Stanley Cup playoff update, so Cowboy Nick, you want to talk about that. You've been dying to talk about it, so I'll leave it all to you. Okay, well, it's coming up. Well, like I said, anybody want to see a good series in between, you know, the Eastern Conference and the Western Conference, but you never know. I mean, I would I would like to see both series go to seven games. I mean, who wouldn't, right? Yeah, exactly. And like, and like right now, right now, this, the, the Sharks and the Blues, and I'm like, I'm so geeking out about this, but you have, you have tonight's game with the show on, on, um, on NBC um, Sportsnet. You have the Sharks on each other, and yes, this game will be at the, yeah, the Sharks will be home in their home arena, so everyone knows so they'll be in, so they'll be in the Shark Tank, which everyone loves to see, and everyone loves to go to, and have that, have that nice giant shark come down, that shark, that great white shark head come down, and then see the players skate out of it, and have all the fans go nuts around you as they, as they're screaming, as the Sharks come out, and you can hear, they can hear the shark and we have Lebowski coming out, we have Gordon, we have all these good players coming out from the Sharks, Lebowski, he's one of the best people on the floor, uh, for us, for, um, Joe Lebowski, one of the greatest, um, points scorers for the Sharks, with 21 points, um, and, and in all the games that he's been in, and you have people like Lebowski, but also And uh, if that doesn't happen, they're all gonna riot once again. As I whispered like a few seconds ago. If the Penguins can win, if 
Uh, it was just game seven, so they were just getting the money in a we'll possibly bring another money down. This one was going to be on um, Thursday on, um, on uh, NBC Sports Net. And if the Penguins can win this game, we'll see the Penguins going to another Stanley Cup, which they have plenty of. But and that Sidney Crosby is going to try to submit his legacy once again. This is coming from the guy who used to hate the Penguins. Quote unquote, winky wink. Now, this is going to be a little off topic here. I know we're done with the hockey segment, all, but I don't know if you heard about this, though. I mean, you know who uh, Gary Radnich is, KNBR, and Crown Floor Sports. Okay, so if you actually, if people don't know what happened, like, come on, I'm going to actually play like a clip here. The, the clip's not going to be very long, but sportscaster Gary Radnich went off script on an on air like situation of a colleague to get to deliver some Space Jam news before him. This week on Cron Four Sports in San Francisco, so Radich begins giving his off-screen colleague Catherine Heenan an evil side eye. Begin announcing LeBron James' upcoming part of the film when she uh, announces, you know, oh, are you mad because I already read that part? It's a matter of faculty, and apparently Gary Radich says he well, according to this, he was actually okay. Instead of just talking about it, I'm, even though they say that he was mad, I'm gonna let the clip play for itself, so it's gonna be pretty loud. So get ready. Tell you, LeBron James is gonna star in Space Jam. Well, we we actually. Oh, you mad? Because I already read that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, how's Steph Curry's uh, knee? Uh, he's nursing it, and it's getting better. Mm-hmm. How long we've we been friends? Twenty three years. I didn't know you were gonna do Have it. Have you ever? And I'm gonna say this with a smile. Ever heard me say right before you came on? There's an irrigation problem in Gilroy. You have to Never. talk to Kasim. You Never talk heard to... me say, oh, it's warm weather today. Never. I stay in my lane. And it, it, it's just for, to a friend. To oh, do it. you got to talk to Kasim. I like Kasim. So yeah. don't try and pit me against the producer, Well, Kasim. he gave me that lovely script. And here's that. And it's hard for me to get mad. Catherine has stayed at my mother's home. She's written my mother notes and stolen my material. So how do I get mad? Anyway, how is Curry's name? Uh, improving. Okay, well. Hey, LeBron was very good in train wreck, so this will be fun. Okay, I shouldn't have brought it up. Yeah, it's going to be great. He, and Michael Jordan started Space Jam, as you earlier reported. I'm sorry. All right. Darn it. Hard to be mad at Catherine, though. She's a good friend of my mom's, and there's going to come a time when uh, you have to choose between the love of your mother and your mother's friends and the honor and dignity of Kron. We may have reached that level. <laughs> So what are, you, what are your thoughts on that? All I, I have to say is, as a cowboy, I have to say is, damn. <laughs> I mean, you know, I know you don't do that, though, in a news station, but, I mean, <laughs> I don't even know what to think of that. All I have to say is, like I said, damn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this has been all over the news, though. I know Gary Radish has been getting some heat for this, and... He actually announced that on Twitter that he's he was actually joking around and he said that he and uh, Catherine he and were good friends and people are still giving him you know BS for this. Was this actually a good move to actually say this on the air? I want to hear your thoughts on it real quick. I think that what I think that the fact is the fact is he did it and now, now that he's done it he can't he can't go back in time he can't go and steal um, he can't go and steal that. 
I mean, I can understand his point, though. It was like, I saw the actual clip and earlier on that she kind I mean, she kind of did, you know. I mean, I can understand why Gary got upset because he's... I mean, yeah, I mean, but you, you don't do that, though, on the air. I mean, I can understand why from his point of view, but I think he kind of let it go a bit too early, in my opinion. You let, you let, you, you just let it go and for now and just do your thing and then wait till it's, you're off the air and then you can say your, you know, your deal, but... Pretty much, pretty much you okay, oh lord. But anyways, I just thought I want to get that out of the way also. But with that being said, we are out of here today on Kyle the Pug Sports Review episode number seven. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If, if you did, please drop a like and don't forget to subscribe to Kyle the Pug Sports channel today. So I'm Kyle the Pug. That's Cowboy Nick. And we'll see you guys next time on Friday for episode number eight. Same time, same place. Have a good day. And as always... Stay safe.